Today I'm giving a tutorial on the quick, inexpensive technique I've been using to create realistic graphs on some of my War Games tables and scenery, like this display board for my 6th edition Dwarf project, or these large-scale tables that I recently finished for both fantasy and historical games. All the techniques shown here are borrowed and adapted from those described by Alan Perry, link in the description below, who in turn gives credit for the idea to Dave Andrews of Games Workshop fame. Here's a stunning example of what can be achieved with this technique to display the Perry Twins' range of Austrian Napoleonic figures. More in the background of the technique later. As a starting point, here's an old display piece I created for a Warcry Warband. All the techniques used getting to this point are pretty widely documented across YouTube. It's just insulation foam, sculptor mould and plaster rock faces created using Woodland Scenics rock moulds, covered with sand and PVA mix and dry brushed in various shades of greys and browns. You don't actually need the ground cover itself anywhere on the board, except where you're planning to leave paths. So that's one of the main reasons this grass technique ends up being so fast. It's only here in this case because of the arid desert theme for which I originally used this diorama. The grass itself is all based around basket liner, um, such as this piece, which is a loose weave of jute and sisal. Uh, you can find it in loads of places online. I got this stuff from Amazon and I'll put the link in the description uh, below the video. What you do is you cut out pieces to fit the areas that you want to cover with grassland. In this case, these are all offcuts um, from the large table that I made. So there are some pieces where I'm kind of abutting one piece up to the next, but those will won't show in the eventual piece. Once you've cut out all your pieces, you'll find there's quite a lot of long strands and bits of other material that are kind of mixed into the fiber. Um, so what I do is I go through and pull out all of this loose material that we don't want to get in the way of the electrostatic grass we'll eventually put onto it. You can also trim this with a pair of scissors. Um, so you'll see there are some darker coloured fibres that I'm just going to remove. There's some almost straw-like bits of material as well that are a bit too uh, hard wearing for what we'd want as a, as a gaming piece. So I'm going to go around, neaten all of this up, and leave it in a more uniform colour, and then we will start gluing it down to the table. After a spot of pruning and trimming, you'll end up with something resembling this. You'll see how removing material has made it lie a lot closer to the table, especially at the edges, um, making it blend much better into where you'll have paths and things like that. So to glue this down, I'm just going to take some PVA from the sadly missed Wilco, and without watering it down, put a bunch on that and spread it out using an old brush. Here's a sufficient amount of PVA on the table. I'm just going to take the matting, line it up with the edge of the board, and press firmly onto the surface. You'll see that there are some spots where I've left bit of overspill on PVA, that doesn't matter at all. It will dry up clear, obviously. And then we just continue the same process over the rest of the table, gluing the rest of the basket liner down. And with all the basket liner down, I'm next going to use some watered down PVA, about a one to one mixture of glue to water. Um, go around the edges and just brush those onto what will become the road surface and the top of the cliff face. This is just to try and smooth down that link um, so that it doesn't have a sudden step up at the edge of the path that will be a bit obtrusive otherwise. The reason I'm doing that now is that when I start applying grass or static grass onto the surface, I don't want to have any glue left on the path that's still wet, otherwise I'll get grass obviously stuck all over the ground texture that I've already put down. So by doing that at this stage it means everything dries together and I then have a finished surface to start applying grass onto later. While I'm doing this I thought I'd just explain the um, origins of this technique. It's one I haven't seen any other videos on. Um, it doesn't seem to be very well known in the fantasy gaming community at all. Here's quite a good example from a game set in the Peninsula campaign on Alan Perry's tables. You can see the basket liner texture quite clearly on the hill at the front of the image. The method was developed first by Dave Andrews 
uh, who's a fairly legendary hobbyist at Games Workshop, who has made many of the impressive dioramas and bits of scenery that you'll see from them over the years. There aren't, however, that many tables that he made using this technique. Later on, he'd start using green dyed toweling instead, which you'll see on Michael Perry's table. So there's an example here from Wars of the Roses game. This perhaps adds to the obscurity of the technique, I suppose. Everything's dried overnight, and now we're going to start applying the static grass using some watered down PVA. So I'm going to take a large-ish brush, and I'm just going to start placing the glue all over the matting surface that we've already put onto the board. You need to be quite generous here, it's not too watered down. Um, this is intended to cover the entire area. And I'm going to use a range of different coloured grasses, mostly um, Jarvis Scenic's 2mm spring. 2mm is good because you don't need a grass applicator for it to stand up usually. Um, and then for slightly longer ones in certain areas, I've got some 4mm autumn and some 4mm dead grass. And those ones are from Geek Gaming Scenics. With the surface all covered with glue, I'm going to take a sieve and start applying the 2mm static grass over the main area, leaving some patches nearer the cliff face and the side of the road to apply longer grasses later on. Because you've got this texture underneath the grass from the hanging basket liner, you don't need to completely cover the entire surface. Getting a light covering is, is perfectly sufficient and will give a nice shade of different colours as the glue dries clear and you can see the other colours from the mat through it underneath. With one section complete, I'm going to take a J cloth and just dab firmly onto the static grass so that the glue covers everything and it fixes itself into the matting. When you're doing this, I found you don't want to go over the same area too many times, at most twice. So make sure you keep moving in a kind of methodical manner around the board as you press the surface down. With the static grass applied, you'll notice that there'll be quite a lot that's ended up on things like piles and at the tops of rocks where you really don't want it being glued down. So with the dry brush, carefully, but very diligently, just brush off any excess. Otherwise you'll end up having to repaint all of the road and re-texture it and everything just to get rid of the grass that you inadvertently glued onto it. The reason I should add that I'm not just upending the board and tapping it to shake off any excess is that some of the scatter that I've applied will still be slightly loose from this, um, especially if I've gone over and sprinkled dead grasses and so on in extra patches. Um, and I don't want to lose all of that before I've sealed it in with a scenic spray. So I find the paintbrush method just works. With the parts and rock faces brushed clean, I'm now going to take some matte scenic sealant spray. This is by Geek Gaming Scenics. And just spray this all over the grass area. Being careful, of course, with some cardboard to make sure you don't get overspray onto walls or furniture or anything like that. You can just use watered down PVA instead but I find this product works quite quickly. It has a nice hold and it's easier um, than trying to find a spray bottle of your own that will do the right application for this. With everything dried, here's the finished article. No need for expensive static grass applicators or huge amounts of flock or dry aggregate to create realistic undulating landforms. Just cheap basket liner, a few handfuls of flock and some scenic sealant. Let me know if you try the method yourself. I always love seeing the scenery that others create for their games.